Now I realize I am super late to this whole trend of people gaming on CRTs again like it's 1785. And the main reason I've not been particularly interested is because I still distinctly remember how excited I was to get rid of mine as a child. Wow, I can't wait to get rid of that big piece of sh and I haven't really been able to shake that negative association with them yet. Until recently. I've had a bit of a change of heart for some reason, so I went on to everybody's favorite source of crap from some random's attic and rustled up this massive little guy to see if I've been missing out or not. But first, today's video is sponsored by the awesome new Deepcool Assassin 4. Now sure, its performance may just be good as supposed to class leading, but it makes up for it with really easy mounting, and the thing that really gets my juices flowing about this cooler is how the fans are integrated into it. Look at this, you just, you pop them off, and then you mount the cooler, and then you just clip everything back in. It's, it's so clean and useful. So if you want a good looking cooler that performs well and has some great quality of life improvements, check out the Deepcool Assassin 4 using the link in the video description. Now the CRT in question is this 13 inch Sony Trinitron KV13FM12. Now from my admittedly very limited research, it seems like if it says Trinitron on it, a CRT is likely not terrible, but we'll see. Now despite being just 13 inch, you can see it's got quite the long booty to it, which means it's really heavy. It weighs about 13 kilograms, I think, which is crazy for a 13 inch display. Now while we're around the voluptuous booty of this Trinitron. Let me give you some context for this video. I happened to watch Independence Day on the weekend, saw a bunch of CRTs in the movie. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I'm stupid for not trying this trend out earlier, so let me go on to Craigslist and buy one. Now, the reason that I got this one specifically was because, well, it was kind of my only option. There was also a 32-inch Sony Trinitron, but it weighed like 8,000 tons and wouldn't fit in my car, so yeah, I had to go with this little guy. Which initially, I was very excited about. I was like, oh, it's even a Trinitron. But then I told my CRT enthusiast friend about my new CRT, who was a lot less excited about it. Uh, for a couple of reasons. The first one is that it's a flat screen, which apparently makes CRT purists vomit in their mouths due to the <laughs> geometry issues with it. But that isn't even the biggest problem with the CRT. The biggest problem is the video inputs, despite the fact that we have like a like a coax looking thing. Uh, but in terms of video inputs, your only real option is this single yellow RCA. Now apparently yellow RCAs are the worst video input ever because I think it was like Momar Gaddafi's input of choice or something. Nice. Now the real reason's obviously more complicated than that, but basically boils down to it being the bandwidth equivalent of trying to pass an adult male through a catheter tube. Now I remember as a kid plugging my consoles into TVs using this port and I didn't grow cataracts on my eyes, but according to the internet and my friend, it's a big no-no. So basically the point is this is very much going to be my first look at CRT gaming. Some of you may be offended by it, but that's more your problem than mine, to be honest. Uh, so with that out the way, I'm going to try and plug a gaming PC into this for some modern CRT gaming. But first we need to see if it works. Now in terms of system, we don't need a whole lot of power, so I'm going to use this tiny one I built in Japan. Now we just need to figure out how to connect it to this tiny little monstrosity. Because I don't think that system natively has a hole for these. So I headed straight to one of the most depressing places in the world, a dying shopping mall, to buy a little adapter. Hey, my journey into the pit of despair was successful. It does look like a piece of crap, but um, I guess we'll find out soon enough. 
I don't know. I feel like this is going to have more of an impact on the image quality than us having to use the Gaddafi connector or whatever. Interestingly, it does have a couple of one-star reviews, seemingly because the shopkeeper didn't know what it was for. But I did also order a couple more, which should come tomorrow. Uh, so I'll test those out later as well. Okay, well, now comes the moment of truth. We get to power up our Trinitron and see if it still works. Whoa. That's quite the sound. Oh, look at that. The wine is, it feels like it would make dogs go crazy, but it's, it's already making me go crazy. I then spent a while dialing in the settings and setting HDMI scaling to get the best picture possible for gaming. Okay, I see what my friend meant about geometry issues. That's supposed to be a straight line. Wow, that looks exactly how I remember CRTs looking back in the day, which is not a compliment. Now, one of the things that gets people really excited about CRTs in the context of modern gaming, as far as I understand, is that they have very quick response times and stuff, which I don't know to what extent the little box we're using to convert the, uh, the HDMI signal to analog is actually gonna impact that, but I'm curious to see what the gameplay feels like. Okay, so the 13-inch monitor is very small and dark. I think we need to turn the, the brightness back up because I can't really see anything. There we go. That's a lot better. Oh, that doesn't feel particularly responsive. Now, I'll try some other games later and it could be down to the little box, but as it is here, it's just okay. Uh, the combination of the very low resolution with the uh, tiny display means that fine details are basically non-existent. You can't read any of the text. Like th this is the first size of text that you can read. In terms of that kind of information, it looks not amazing. Also, the sound is driving me crazy. This thing is a real whiner. It's just sitting there going at me the whole time. And I really, I really don't like it. And the thing is, it's not even just because I'm sitting close to it now. It's room filling. No matter where I stand in my office, I just hear the And with my skepticism very much still in place, I decided to try another game. Setting video settings is a, a real joy on this display. But after getting through the menus, aside from a couple more legibility issues, I can't read what button you want me to press to make it go away. Something special happened. Oh wow, okay, no, never mind. Doom Eternal feels frankly telepathic like the the instantness of the response is is pretty impressive like this feels this feels really good now i think aside from just the lightning fast response another reason why fps games are so pleasing on this monitor is how it renders movement like this is a 60 hertz display but you would not tell that from just, just the way the projectiles and stuff move across the display. Yeah, there's something about the motion rendering that's really cool. Now, one of the things this really gets you to want to do is play some old games on it. Things like Half-Life. CRTs are so interesting because this is both the best and worst image ever. There's something about the way that it renders colors and motion that makes it look beautiful, but then it also looks terrible at the same time. I, either way, I, I kind of get why people like it. it. It's pretty cool. And then after spending quite some time playing a bunch of different games, the other RCA to HDMI converters arrived. For comparison's sake, I decided to get the only two adapters from Amazon that wouldn't take eight months to ship. This mini one came with all the cables you'd need and is USB powered, whereas the big metal one uses a wall wart with an annoyingly short cable. But in return, you get an S video out. In terms of input latency, I couldn't tell a difference between any of them. They all felt snappy as hell. Although interestingly, when it comes to image quality, both the ones I bought from Amazon looked markably more washed out than the one I bought from the Pit of Despair. And it doesn't even need any external power. The final quirk was in terms of image scale. Both the ones from Amazon would fit with 7% HDMI scaling, whereas the shop one didn't quite fit even at 10%. And with my preferred adapter chosen, I decided to compare the CRT to an OLED. Now obviously just firing up the OLED, it's clearly a completely different animal. For one, I can actually read the text and um, it's so vivid looking. In my mind, I was like, wow, there's, there's definitely gonna be something missing in the OLED. And the thing that's missing is that I, I can't not see anymore. 
Although, still, I would say, I, I do think the CRT has a slight edge in terms of motion rendering. Oh, not even a slight edge. The CRT definitely has an edge when it comes to motion rendering. That's pretty cool. That's the main advantage that the CRT has, is how it renders movement on the display. That's pretty crazy. The CRT renders motion decently better than this high refresh rate OLED. But maybe that changes with a game designed for high refresh rate. I, I really will say, aside from the fact that in most categories, I'd say the OLED looks better. As somebody who really has an issue with how modern displays render movement, it's something that I complain quite a lot about. The CRT blew my mind. It's just different. I then decided to do some PS5 gaming. And after moving back from the OLED to the CRT, aside from the OLED being better in a lot of aspects in terms of image quality, as you'd kind of hope it would be, the CRT handily wins when it comes to motion rendering, in my opinion. There's something just so much more natural about the way that a CRT handles movement, which is kind of a sight to behold. With that, let me know about your recent CRT experiences in the comment section down below, and go check out that tiny Japan build if you have time, and until the next video, thank you for watching, bye bye.